hospital. It's a cage. It's important we find out your power so we can help you get better. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hi. This is our first ever virtual Comic Con interview. How is it for you guys doing? Like Hall H is now Hall Home. <laughs> H stands for home. What is it like for you guys doing like a panel and all this stuff at home? This is like Hall the Garage. <laughs> <laughs> I, find it really, I find it really funny when people say that they're not getting used to quarantine. I'm like, this is my life. Like we were actually just inside and cocooned for months until we're out. <laughs> But there's advantages, right? Like there's certain advantages. Like I have my cheese plate off to the side, you yeah. know? <laughs> oh yeah. Like I'm not wearing shoes right now. You don't know that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, jumping is um I wanna know for each of you, what is your first memory with X-Men? Like what do you remember? My first memory is definitely like Wolverine, the hairy chest, the hair, the claws. That's my first one, but what is it for you guys? Well, mine is Wolverine. Like real- yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Mine was Jean Grey's veins on her face. I, I forgot the name of the actress that played her. She played it so brilliantly. It's so terrifying to me. Um, but yeah, I think it was in the same movie, actually. Um, I, I really knew the comics before the movies. So in the 80s growing up, my, my co-writer and I were always reading Marvel comics. So the X-Men comics were, were a thing long before there were any X-Men movies. But uh, I'd also say Wolverine is certainly the most iconic character in, in X-Men and I remember him vividly reading that as a kid. And then I, I, too. And I think this is probably the, like, the most quintessential Comic-Con question ever, but what X-Men power would you most want to have? Whichever X-Men can fly, I, I would do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, I always like Nightcrawler. Um, yeah, bam. You know, it's very cool, but also the teleportation aspect to it. Yeah. yeah. I think magic, like I, what I like about like, like popping in and popping out is that you can just disappear from, yeah. you know. I mean, now more than ever, you know, it's without, without not being able to travel, it would be really- It would be amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. like I'm from Wouldn't Brazil, it? so I'm in a different country. I would be like, boom, at home. Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Teleportation and time travel would be two key things right now. Yeah. Exactly. Lisi could right now just start teleporting between our screens. It would be so <laughs> awesome. Like she's here, <laughs> she jumps to you. Maybe oh, oh, hug you guys. I could be yeah, hug no. you guys. <laughs> So for the actors, what was your favorite? I mean, obviously, um, I don't know your familiarity with X-Men when each of you got the role, but what was sort of your favorite discovery about your character, either in researching it or in playing the role? Yeah, I think for me, um, you know, initially you kind of join, you know, um, when we were told we were joining this, it's like, you know, you kind of this expectation of this kind of big superhero film. Uh, the surprise on this was uh, really how internal all these characters were uh and how much we got to create that and 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 use that to kind of hold on to uh just to play throughout this whole thing um so yeah really the internal idea of powers and the idea of what it means to be different and have this in like you know uh uh, kind of thing inside you that, that you were struggling with uh, was like, I did not think I would be going on that kind of journey when I was kind of joining this movie. I thought it would be, you know, a, a different experience, but it, but it was, you know, a, more, a bit more harrowing in that sense, which is always, you know, wonderful to kind of play. I enjoyed it. Anybody else? Yeah, it seems from me, from what I've seen so far, that there's, it's, it's an emotional journey too, that you guys are all sort of grappling with, learning to deal with these powers and, and that yeah. kind of thing. But. And we really approached it that powers were uh, uh, not something cool to have, but something that would be pretty horrifying to have if you woke up one day with powers and you were hurting people with them without intending to. Yeah, yeah, that's the main yeah. theme in the in the. I think even in the comics is like it's it's more of something that keeps you scared of becoming rather than something you want to hone and, and 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 heroically become, right? Like you. you yeah. Sunspot doesn't think of becoming Sunspot. He's like, how do I not light people on fire? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that, that like plays, I think, for all of our characters, uh, a huge deal in the narrative. Like, you know, um, how do, how does that play into? Um, sorry, I totally lost my train of thought. 
<laughs> but how does that, how how does that play uh, into the relationship of these characters being so different and not getting along? To okay, we need to figure out who we are, and come together to destroy the the big. You know, I don't, I can't. Fair. You know. <laughs> <All right>. Fair. <laughs> I think Quite everybody literally. knows there's a bear in <laughs> the bear. Yeah. I think we know. I'm yeah. like, should I say that? I can't say that. Should I say that? <laughs> <laughs> I know you have to always keep straight. What am I allowed to say? What am I not allowed to say? Okay. Um, so for you guys, I know like you jumped into this and I know when you were filming it, you were all, I think, staying in a small hotel together. Did it feel like a sleepaway camp in a sense? And was oh. it also like, did you have a New Mutants boot camp? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. <laughs> we did. It was kind of a boot camp being in the hotel yeah. in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> we were there for three weeks before we started. Yeah, filming. yeah, we had a three week. Well, yeah, we had a three week process, and uh, yeah, I mean, we're all in this, you know, in the middle of nowhere in a Marriott in in Norwood. <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Norwood. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it was it was interesting because you are having these, you know, in 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 the story, these characters who are kind of trapped in this facility and having to kind of, you know, bond with each other. And then we were trapped in a hotel having to bond with each other. I think our, our experience was more pleasant than the movie, you know. Yeah, but, which uh, were terrifying, the Marriott or being in like the, the you know, locked into the <laughs> place together? <laughs> <laughs> <don't know> an honest answer. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've also got to go through, uh, you know, some, some uh, personal, uh, yeah, uh, phys physical training, uh, which was nice. Yeah. You know, and we did that together, and and, and you know, mm -hmm. again because they're teenagers, it wasn't like you know got to make these guys huge, uh, but it was nice to kind of bond in uh, yeah that kind of way. We were lots of physical physically work together. And, uh, I don't know who was who was like the the person from the get go that you were all like, oh my gosh, this person's getting it really quickly. Like this person's like getting all the stunts or whatever you had to do like right away. Who had done, I feel like a couple of them had done stunt work before, right? Wire work yeah. and all that. Maisie I mean, for Maisie sure. Maisie had done yeah. a lot. But you yeah. know, how quickly Anya got, got that sword was... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It'd be funny if Maisie was like, Anya, give me that sword. I can do some... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like, you know, I, I mean, I, Anya, I think, used to be a, a dancer, so she kind of has yeah. really good rhythm and movement. So to see her really... Yeah just take that kind of on it was really cool yeah see. yeah and then behind the scenes what was what was like the sleepaway camp like were you guys bonding at night blue what were you guys up to what were you guys doing oh yeah we we all pretty much hung out every night yeah, yeah. we we watched tv together we made each other dinners <laughs> um we, we had to share a bottle of wine we'd talk about everything that was happening what we were doing we helped each other with cell tapes just ev everything and then we all went on to set together um sometimes it, it we was, would go play um what do we go play at that bar where they every week would have like trivia or whatever oh yeah, like that trivia yeah. Night. yeah. Um, that's oh. right and we went to ball yeah. games and things like that. We did, mm -hmm. did some stuff like that. We went into Boston, like into the city together quite a few times. We all saw uh, Dunkirk together. Hilarious. Actually, the whole, oh, yeah. no way. the whole crew, yeah. everybody. We all went to we 70, Dunkirk right? It was 7, 70, right? 70. Yeah. Yeah, we saw it on the, on the 70 the screen. Yeah. Yeah. Meter. <laughs> sure. Ask Christopher fun. Nolan would have it. He wants you to see it on the biggest screen you possibly can. <laughs> Try. As really you should did. with all movies. Yeah, true. <laughs> you I'll, can help. I'll, I'll, yeah. Um, Josh, for you, yes, I know this was your baby. You, in, you know, to use to use a Christopher Nolan phrase, this the inception of this whole sort of superhero horror genre sort of hybrid was yours. What was the initial? What was your initial pitch meeting like? Like when you pitched this movie, and then how did you, you know, in filming a superhero movie, how does it change things when you're bringing a horror element into it? Well, it's, it's, uh, so, I mean, I wrote this with my best friend who I've known since the day I was born. Our moms are best friends and we're from Virginia and we read Marvel comics growing up. And uh, I just had always liked these kind of dark supernatural new mutants stories. They were just so different. The artwork and everything so different from anything I'd seen in comics before, other than like Vertigo comics, uh, really dark DC stuff. Um, and to see superheroes in those things I hadn't seen before. We were really just trying to capture that. So it's, it's not like we sat there and said, we're gonna go figure out a way to make a comic book horror movie. It was really the material sort of dictated that it be a comic book horror movie. And then we added sort of more elements than that, like, uh, you know, the romance between Danny and Rain and uh, 
a lot of kind of the John Hughes, Joss Whedon kind of humor stuff that's coming of age stuff. Uh, all that stuff just kind of became a melting pot for us to make hopefully a comic book movie that wasn't like anyone you've seen before that has sort of its own identity uh, and can kind of stand on its own separate from all that stuff and still be its own thing. Yeah. Are we going to see any, like, are we going to have surprises? Are we going to see a lot of Easter eggs? And there's, are there going to be any Marvel tie-ins, tie Josh? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, it's, it's absolutely connected to the X-Men universe. We're just, uh, we just had the, uh, we were in the unfortunate position of being the very last movie after the franchise had already been closed out with Dark Phoenix, which was really supposed to come out after ours, but because of the merger, they put everything into it to get it done. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I sort of like that it's by itself and isn't part of it other than sort of if you watch it, you know you're in the X-Men universe and Professor X is out there somewhere. But uh, I kind of like that it's its own thing. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, depend on those movies in any way to, to tell the story. And didn't you initially pitch it with a comic book? Didn't you create a comic book for your pitch? Nate and I made like a 60-page PDF for Fox that sort of took them through kind of like a a series of movies about these characters that each one would be its own unique horror movie. Uh, and the first one was a rubber reality horror movie, which is what we went and made. And then for, for each of you, um, is there an X-Men movie that kind of means the most to you as a fan? Um, for I really loved Logan. I mean, I thought like yeah. the way that they did that, and I think the Hugh Jackman's work of like grounding the character so much that it's kind of like you can, feel it you can connect with you know his background story you know all that i really love the way that they did all the action and and the way yeah. that it, the film is i really loved it yeah I'd, I'd say logan and days of future past are my favorite x-men movies uh days of future past the one with quicksilver running around the room and all that yeah that i also awesome. love the first one the very first yeah. one about something so i mean it was a taste of something new that uh we wouldn't know back then that there would be like 11 movies after that that would change uh, fans forever i mean wasn't just little little uh little magneto bending back all the all the all the bars of the gates of uh, auschwitz or whatever was yeah. so powerful i mean that yes was, that was, that was definitely an image yeah. yeah charlie what about you yeah, uh, for me, I guess, again, the first one, and uh, just because I was a teenager back then, and, and you know, and watching those movies really, yeah, it, it's, it's, it's there when they're probably, well, it can be one of the most exciting, I guess, that projection where you come out and you're running around pretending you have plants, um, you know, and things like that. So, yeah, I, it's funny watching this, you know, we got to see the movie back in March, and there was a, you know, a, a real moment in the movie, uh, when I had this moment where like the little 13 year old in me who watched that original X-Men movie was just like, it kind of kicking. And uh, it was <laughs> the kind of experience, so. You just gave me chills, that hair on my arm just stood up when you said that, because I know what that's like. I just watched the first one yesterday again, and it's like so iconic at this point. Um, and then um, my last question for you guys, you've all been part of other shows or other series. What does the X-Men, fandom how does that compare to other things that you've worked on i'd say without the movie even being out yet that they're the biggest fan base i've encountered and the movie isn't even out yet uh way bigger than than all the rest of them uh and people's kind of devotion to it and how much that they that they want to see it hasn't died the embers are still strong and all that so they still seem psyched and excited which is great yeah i think so yeah i think i think the same thing as you josh i think like it's it's really special how fans for comics they're really, really passionate. And I think the X-Men is such a strong comic that, you know, people connect with the character and their questions and all that. I do believe they're really good fans, like really, really um, committed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, being in Stranger Things and having that fandom, which is, it's, it's huge. You know, I've had that kind of exposure to, you know, a very committed, dedicated, large fan base. And then, you know, when I've been out and around and, and most of the time people will just, you know, they shout stranger things or Jonathan at me. But it is really interesting when you do get someone who, you know, who's anticipating the film and they come up and go, hey, you're Cannonball, right? And uh, yeah, I get just that kind of like, the, yeah, that, that kind of like, man, I love this. It's like, a lot of times all the, all the, all the dudes, to me, it wasn't about the stature of the fandom. It was more about, you know, even if you're if you're not like a diehard fan of X-Men, you've probably been touched by its stories um, and how that relates to 
people in real life and becoming uh, and growing up and your body changing, your insecurities uh, heightening. And uh, that's been, at least to me, very personal and how the X-Men have impacted me uh, back in the day and still do. Uh, to me, that's, that's the power of X-Men in a way. Yeah, I mean, that was, yeah, I mean, that was their intention originally was to talk about the civil rights movement and minorities and everything else. So it's just sort of gone on down the line. Right. It's amazing, isn't it? 2020, here we are, and it's so relevant. Oh, totally. Yeah. More than ever. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's what, you know, I'm looking forward to in seeing this film is sort of that stuff that they were dealing with in the 60s, even just like coming of age and like dealing with you know, what makes you different can make you absolutely special, unique, and beautiful. I think that's sort of the message that I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing in this film. Yeah, and I, mean, I think it's too about accepting people, flaws and all, you know what I mean? 